Hey everybody, it's your old buddy Uncle Rich here for Who's Telling the Truth. Curtis, are our mics working okay? Can you guys hear me all right? Okay, because it seems like something, I don't know, just something funny it was. But anyway, guys, today is March 19th. Beautiful job, Judy. This is show number 209, and the name of the show is Walkout. And guys, we're going to do this show in honor of the kids that walked out of school, who walked out in honor of the kids that got killed down in Florida. And this is our third show, third show in a row that we're doing on the gun violence. And this coming Saturday is an event that, I tell you, we're really looking forward to. But, uh, you know, we're going to have the, uh, the march on the 24th on Saturday. And, guys, something funny is going on. I mean, something really dramatic is starting to happen. Now, we all know... You know, every week I talk about my, our good buddy, Uncle Joe. And through thick and thin, you know, Uncle Joe is not, Judy, can you put up Uncle Joey's website, please? We, you know, we go on to Things to Ponder, and, and Uncle Joey's knocked me off of his Things to Ponder website, but he's always kept his messenger service open with me, and, we, and through thick and thin, We've always communicated, but guys, something pushed Uncle Joey over the edge this week, and he blocked me. I know, he, I tell you, and the reason, the only time he's ever done this is when things are going bad for the Republican Party. So how bad could things be going Judy, let's start by putting in a little salt in the wound, which still number oh oh, please. And guys, I think this is what really got Joey going. And uh, as you can see, now this is a clipping that I took from Mediate, and it says President Trump at GOP fundraiser on trade talks with Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau. Trump boasted to donors that he made up facts in meeting with Justin Trudeau. Judy, come back to me. So, guys, Trump admitted that he made up facts. And I think Uncle Joey said, wait a minute, wait a minute. When the Supreme Commander admits he lied, maybe I should start to believe him. And how am I going to believe him? I know. I'll block Uncle Rich. <laughs> and guys, Judy, let's go to still number 01, and we'll have a little bit more fun. And guys, you know, this is uh, the only thing easier to buy in America than a gun is a Republican. Judy, come back to me. And guys, if the, and I think Uncle Joey's finally starting to get the message. He finally sees that he's been conned by one of the best con men in the history of cons. Hey guys, we're, we broadcast from Danbury. We're a stone's throw from Bethel, Connecticut, where P.T. Barnum was born. I was actually in the house that P.T. Barnum was born in. They actually still have the birthing table in the kitchen. Well, that was 20 years ago. But guys, P.T. Barnum was a huckster. Trump makes P.T. Barnum <laughs> look like a novice. And Judy, let's go to still number 02, just so we can solidify what's finally happened with the Republican Party. And guys, this is from Occupy Danbury. And uh, there, I'm on Facebook with them. But the American revolts against Trump and the GOP. And guys, look what happened in Virginia. Ed Gillespie will be a great governor of Virginia. Donald Trump on Twitter one, one week before the election. What was the result? 
Ralph Northam wins with largest Democratic margin of victory since 85. What happened in Alabama? Trump said we need a Republican in the Senate. Get out and vote for Roy Moore. Guys, remember we did the show? No more. So Uncle Rich <laughs> was able to help make sure that Doug Jones got elected first time in 25 years. And then what just happened in Pennsylvania, everybody? Trump said, this is an important race. <laughs> we should win easily. <laughs> and Connor Lamb took the seat. And guys, Judy, come back to me. And guys, I tell you, hopefully, hopefully, this signifies the blue wave that's going to be coming this September. And guys, the reason why is Trump keeps shooting himself in the foot. I mean, it's getting to the point where it's becoming ridiculous. And the first video we're going to play, and Kurt, we got to watch the volume on this. Guys, this is an actual commercial for the uh, March 24th commercial. This is uh, for the March 24 March. And this is one of the kids, David, that I've grown so fond of. So, Judy, can we have uh, clip number three? And Kurt, watch the volume. Nope, clip. Clip three, not still three. What if our politicians weren't the bitch of the NRA? It doesn't make sense, Seth. I have to wait till I'm 21 to get a handgun, but I can get this weapon at 18. I don't know. We didn't address it as president. Well, I think you know, because you're afraid of the NRA, right? No. <laughs> what if we all voted and said this is not okay? It was an incredibly exciting so election night volume? in a district. There never should have been a question that the Republicans should have won. They're sending a Democrat from the heart of Trump country. Voters are sending a message. And if the president isn't hearing it, a whole lot of other people are. What if we stood up as Americans and fought for our freedom and our children's lives? Everybody is saying politicians who are corrupt, politicians who are accepting money from these organizations, you can't run from us. We are the people who voted you in and we are the people who will vote you out. My name is David Hogg and I stand with the Never Again movement. Join us on March 24th as we march for our lives and the future of America. Guys, what Judy has up on the screen. What if our screen, politicians were the keep bitch that up of on the, the screen now? Does keep it? that still up. What Judy has up there right now is what's going to be happening this Saturday in Gaylordsville. And you'll see where the um, ab above Danbury, you'll see the uh, you know the red circle there, and the rally's going to be at ten o'clock at the, on Saturday the twenty fourth, and it's going to be on the corners of Route sixty seven. And 317. So, Judy, come back to me. So, guys, Uncle Rich is going to be there. I'm going to try to contact the people that are putting up the, um, the event. And hopefully I'm going to be able to, you know, speak my piece. You know, give a little bit of a, a pep talk to everybody. Because I tell you, I got a lot to say. And that's the reason why we call the show. Judy, what happened to our bugs? We're missing our bugs. We're missing our who's telling the truth bugs. But guys, the next clip we're going to show you, it's about Trump. And Trump with his outrageous statements on guns. And where he stands and where he doesn't stand. And how he flip-flops and the things he says. And guys, a lot of, a lot of things, if looks could kill, some of these people, but you'll see what I mean by watching the clip. So we'll just call this one, If Looks Could Kill. Judy, number four, please. Video number four. Where a teacher would have a concealed gun on them, they'd go for special training, and they would uh, be there. And if you, uh, <laughs> if you do this, and a lot of people are talking about it, and it's certainly a point that we'll discuss, but concealed carry for teachers and for people of talent, of that type of talent. <laughs> so let's say you had 20% of your teaching force, because that's pretty much the number. If you had a teacher with, who was adept at firearms, they could very well end the attack very quickly. And the 
good thing about a suggestion <laughs> like that, and we're going to be looking at it very strongly, and I think a lot of people are going to be opposed to it. I think a lot of people are going to like it. But the good thing is that you'll have a lot of people with it. And so that would be certainly a situation that is being discussed a lot by a lot of people. You'd have a lot of people that'd be armed, that'd be ready. They're professionals. They may be Marines that left the Marines, left the Army, left the Air Force, and they're very adept at doing that. Uh, you'd have a lot of them, and they'd be spread evenly throughout the school. So the other thing, I really Isn't believe that if these cowards knew that that was that the school was you know well guarded <laughs> from the standpoint of having pretty much w professionals with great training <laughs> i think they wouldn't go into the school to start off with i think it could very well solve your problem so does anybody like that idea here does anybody like it right and do people feel strongly against it anybody anybody, anybody? strongly anybody? against it all right i mean i can look, we can understand both sides huh? And certainly it's controversial, but we'll study that along with many other ideas. Uh, anybody else something anything. to say? Yes, go ahead. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. <laughs> At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone no, in this room is now dumber video, for having listened fun. to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> Guys, you got to love Trump, and you got to love what some of these companies do to have fun. You know? But guys, the next clip we're going to play, this is the real deal. This is the real kids that are going out of their way. They're spending their Friday nights socializing with their friends, planning how they're going to get to these different events, you know, to support this movement. And guys, let's be honest with each other. This is going to be the type of movement that, that you know, we did it. We, one of our shows recently, you know, uh, you know, we did a show, we called it, we want to put a, a badge of shame, wrap a badge of shame around these politicians, you know, that accept our bribes, you know, that they've they've touched the third rail. And, you know, finally we're starting to take baby steps. And guys, these are all the, just the, the last few shows we've done. And what's going to be the single issue voter this fall? The NRA. And like I've said so many times before, if the NRA donates to an individual, that individual does not get a vote. It's that simple. Take the money from the NRA and you don't get a vote from a reasonable human being. Because why? Because you got people like Joey that get everything asked backwards and we're gonna have a lot of fun with that because the clips we have tonight, we got some good comedy lined up. So guys, Let's have some fun with the actual kids preparing for what they're going to do on the 24th. Judy? Daniel, if you can get on that. It's Friday night, but this is no social gathering. These Prospect High School students are organizing a life-changing event. I believe that it's far past time for change, and I'm just very excited and humbled to be a part of this movement. On March 24th, students across the country will take to the streets for the March for Our Lives, a protest of gun violence in the wake of the mass school shooting in Parkland, Florida. I'm tired of seeing thoughts and prayers, you know? I don't want any more thoughts and prayers. I want change. I want legislative change, and I want... I want people to not feel like they're not safe anymore. We want to make it known that our generation is not the generation that's going to stand by and allow rhetoric to just keep being spewed after a tragic event like a mass shooting, a school shooting. The main event is in Washington, D.C., but these students will make sure their voices are heard in San Jose. On the 24th, if we can see so many people come together to agree that there needs to be some kind of change and that we're not doing enough right now, I'll definitely be, be satisfied in that. Thousands of people have already expressed interest in the march on Facebook. 150 students have signed up for the first volunteer meeting on Saturday. They could use your help. If you'd like to donate to the San Jose March, there's a link on our website, abc7news.com. In San Jose, Katie Marzullo, ABC7 News. Guys, Judy, do you want to put up that uh, number six one more time? Still number six, so we can just show people what to look for on the web. And then uh, 
Guys, you know, like I said, it's, it's you know, March for Our Lives. It's going to be Rally on the Green on the corner of Route 67 and 317 in Roxbury at 10 o'clock. And yours truly will be there. So, Judy, come back to me, and I'll be where you won't, you won't be able to miss me, guys. <laughs> You want to talk to me? If you got something you want me to talk about on the show, hey, you know, I'm, I'm here for one thing and one thing only. So that, you know, everybody, everybody gets, can, everybody's voice can be heard. You know, we want to level the playing field, give everybody an equal opportunity. And guys, some of the things that, that don't happen, and especially on Fox News, is they don't give people an equal opportunity. And uh, Tucker Carlson had somebody on, and guys, just listen how irrational he becomes when he wants to talk about, first of all, you know, he's from Fox, so you know he's against the kids walking out. But then he has the audacity to say, well, what would happen if these kids walked out in support of uh, not, uh, people that uh, can't have abortions? And what would happen if these people, if the students walked out in support of the NRA? And I'm saying to myself, what in the world could possibly make you think of something like that? Who could put that in your head? Abortion and the NRA and people marching so that people don't get killed with assault weapons. Well, I just don't get it. How does the Republican Party function? It makes no sense to me. And let's show you how little sense it makes by playing clip number seven, Judy.